Well, and maybe uh, Geza would like to comment on one of these uh, points. Yes, who's from Hungary? Yes, over there, yeah. Especially, of course, the last sentence, yeah. because there's still some room in there, may yeah. not yet be or won't be ready. Uh, COSA is a fantastic project for us. It's a, a best possible approach for us, what we can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think, uh, I feel uh, to be, I, I feel uh, ashamed to be a Hungarian today. And this is that uh, in Riga, when we met last time, I was very positive uh, in connection with the implementation and the introduction of this model in Hungary. Today, I'm very negative. And this has political reasons. That uh, the first line says that penal code has changed. Yeah. In Hungary, uh, the, imprison, the number of imprisoned people has changed dramatically. So many, many people. Uh, the numbers are 14,000 and 18,000. So it's, it's really, I think, it's a dramatical change mm -hmm. of imprisonment. So the recent government uh, believes that to incarcerate people, that's the solution. We don't believe in that. So that's the problem that I think that we are ready for uh, implementing that. Uh, we have a great uh, volunteer uh, network, so yeah. that will, meet, will be not a problem. But without a state cooperation, it's not possible. So. Yeah. Uh, we are not only Charles Angels. In, in Hungary, we need the state uh, much more than in Canada. Okay. So I, I was wondering, because of course it was also the question this morning towards the Reverend, um, can, can the Circles network, the European network, be helpful in this? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I, I think, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So, so uh, the solution might be to start the next project uh, funded by the European uh, Union, and that might be a solution for us, because uh, because I see that uh, uh, these changes changes within the prison system cause uh, such a great turbulence uh, within the professionals inside the prison and the ma prison management that they are not ready for any further or surplus activity, and we believe that it needs some. Uh, uh, surplus energy there, and yeah. if they don't have results for that, uh, the European Union is the, seems to be the only uh, financial resource for that. Uh, uh, I think no banks are ready uh, to do that in, in Hungary because the government hates the banks, yeah. uh, not like in Spain where the Kaixa is, is a favoring helping this. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the Hungarian government, okay. so, so the, the Hungarian government is the enemy of the banks, especially the international okay. one. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's why I think uh, in, yeah. in 2016 it's a possibility Maybe. because uh, we yeah. fig figured out a new solution to base on a religious organization yeah. uh, which previously uh, dealt with homeless people but it's a countrywide network, and they, are, they seem to be ready uh, okay. to extend their activity towards these sex offenders. And especially oh, interesting. The so you're starting from another area yeah, and yeah. trying to use the, 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 the religious of their approach. Into yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, clever. So, so, and that's, that's because in Hungary, uh, the priests do not commit uh, okay. sexual offense against children, as you know. No. So uh, the Catholic Church doesn't uh, 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 co uh, compensate yeah. any such uh, 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 activities because they, are, they do not exist exactly. officially. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Can, can the network be supportive also towards others? So in this case, for example, that experience in one country, not alone by sharing knowledge, but also helping other countries helping other governments maybe to implement circles? Um, well, one of the uh, uh, first things we learn from implementing projects in country where they are not uh, established before is that it can help to have uh, people from uh, uh, countries in where COSA project have been well established to uh, hold presentations, uh, talk to the media, to, to, to evidence that COSA can work. So that is a way in which uh, um, yeah, projects can help each other 
to, to talk to the media, talk to the governments, give presentations from countries where circles are run well and work well. So, of course, that is one way, but of course, changing really have some political influences out of uh, the question, but uh, some influence through the media may be a possibility. Anything else? I think we uh, should continue our presentation to reach the end in time and have you all uh, for lunch uh, in time. Um, this is just uh, uh, one of the uh, aspects of the national context is the societal climate that sex offenders uh, are uh, entering into. And to, uh, to assess the, the societal climate in the countries that are now involved in these projects, we also held a web survey a uh, research into community attitudes about sex offenders and sex offender rehabilitations and we did that in uh, together with the people from the Nottingham University, Birgit Firm, uh, Sue Brown also and Laurie Herr Duke has helped. Um, we had uh, uh, a questionnaire put out uh, in uh, community panels in web panels in all nine countries and we asked uh, questions about what do you do they know about sex offender what about the knowledge is it uh, uh, do they know or are there many misperceptions we asked uh, questions about uh, do they want to be informed if a sex offender is re-entering community so what are the notification needs of the, the general public um, what are the attitudes in general to sex offenders, uh, specifically to sex offender treatment and to sex offender rehabilitation? And we also ask questions about COSA. Do they know COSA projects? Have they heard of them? Um, if there would be such a project in the in their nearby, would they be willing to volunteer, or would they support others who were volunteers, uh, their partner, their family, friends? Um, and how are the attitudes in general to volunteers working with sex offenders? Do they think that could work or are, are they completely negative? Um, we asked about 200 people per country. Those were people in web panels and we tried to, to have a representative group of uh, people. And I would like to share some of the results uh, with you. There will be a more complete report about this research uh, more to the end of the project and that will also be a publication. But just to, to share some of the results. Um, to our surprise, um, most people are aware that stranger danger is not the thing to be afraid of. The level of mis clear misperceptions was rather low, about 22% of across all countries, and those uh, percentages didn't vary very much between countries. One in five people held clear misperceptions, but most of the people have a more or less accurate picture of sex offenders. All, in all countries, there was a high level of notification needs. About three quarters of the people said they would like to be informed if a sex offender is uh, re-entering the community, but what sort of notification that varied greatly. Some people would would like to have a website or a, uh, have a point where they could access uh, information, and others. Uh, most uh, in most countries, most people think that schools uh, should be informed. Also, um, in general, negatives about of uh, attitudes about sex offenders and sex offender rehabilitations are tend to be negative, but not as extreme as maybe we all think. Um, which means that the, the part of the public that is really uh, shouting out and uh, acting out ag against sex offenders may be only those who are, have the loudest voices and the majority is keeping quiet and is more acceptive uh, about uh, sex offender rehabilitation. But the, the general idea about sex offenders' capacity to change is pessimistic. In general, most people think that sex offenders uh, cannot change their behavior. So maybe that is a point that uh, there are some information needs. Maybe people should be told that sex offenders can change their behavior. behavior. 
Um, however, there was a lot of support for mandatory treatment, so which is quite interesting. If you think people cannot change, why should you treat them? But there is a high level of support for mandatory treatment. And uh, much to our surprise, there was a rather high support for COSA volunteering in almost all countries. Uh, half of the people said they would support if a family member became a COSA volunteer or if a friend became a COSA volunteer. Which doesn't mean they would all become volunteers themselves. Percentages about that I will show in the next uh, picture. Um, but what in general was interesting that you saw some differences between countries with the United Kingdom tending to be more negative, more uh, uh, yeah, more, more negative in general, uh, less permissive, and uh, countries like uh, the Netherlands and the Belgium and also Hungary being more uh, acceptive, uh, accepting, uh, holding in general more positive attitudes to sex offender rehabilitation and COSA. And what we also saw was that uh, education level partly explains atti attitudes towards sex offenders. People with low education levels are, across all countries, are more negative about sex offenders and sex offender rehabilitation. So maybe that is a, a group of the community that needs special information or needs to be informed in uh, different ways. I promised you some results about uh, our questions about COSA. Uh, these are the results on two questions. The first question was, did you ever hear about COSA projects? Um, percentages vary from something like 3% in Ireland uh, to very surprising like 13% in Bulgaria where there isn't even a project really well established yet. But so somehow they have heard of COSA or at least say so and it, it, we were very surprised by that but uh, what we found is also that um, this can be explained partly by the professionals who were in these uh, uh, samples because um, something like five to ten percent of the people who uh, who were interviewed, who filled in the questionnaires, were also professionally working with sex offenders and most of them knew COSA already, so this is partly explained by that. Um, we also asked them, would you yourself uh, become a volunteer if a project were nearby? And then um, quite a lot of people said, yes, I would, I would be interested to become a volunteer. It is between 7% in Latvia and also again in Bulgaria a high percentage of 17%. If you uh, calculate this back into real number of your uh, uh, adult population, it shouldn't be a problem to uh, find enough volunteers. It's just a problem how to locate them. Where do you find them? But I think this is very encouraging. There is a, a rather a high number of people that that could be, uh, yeah, that would be uh, willing to volunteer for COSA. I think we get to our next uh, film fragment. Should I introduce that? Okay. Um, the next movie fragment uh, is really about building a circle. And uh, in um, our project, we, uh, in, in Circles for the UK, keeping or maintaining good quality standards, circle standards, uh, was also a major uh, issue. And what the fragment, video fragment is telling us is about how to build an outer circle, how to build an inner circle, but also something about uh, volunteer selection criteria and volunteer training, very important because no COSA with good volunteers. The question also is raised, uh, volunteers who have been sexually abused themselves, can they do the job? Uh, and also something about core member selection criteria. COSA uh, stands for Circles of Support and Accountability, which are 
groups of four to seven um, volunteer citizens uh, who have come together uh, to work with uh, a person who has been released at warrant expiry, a person who's been released at the very end of their sentence. COSA is about developing a relationship of trust. And um, a lot of trust depends on how much I distrust myself to be able to trust another human being. It's a community that has said, we have a responsibility to. It helps communities become engaged with the problem. We're trying to find shelter. Nobody does this alone. No one individual is ever left alone in this process. And that's the beauty of the circles of support because it's a, it's a group of people. It's not just one individual trying to act on their own. Circles of support is, a, uh, is really two circles. The outer circle um, are the professionals from the community. These are your police officers, your probation officers, your psychologists, your medical professionals, uh, your mental health, addictions people, uh, people who are uh, expert at working with fetal alcohol syndrome. All of these people work also uh, voluntarily, uh, and that means building a relationship with each of those people. They form the outer circle, and they support that inner circle who supports the core members. So this really is a community, a community response. It's a relationship building process, no question about it. Probation and police work closely together and can also act as the safety net for a COSA group and by extension, the community. You may wish to form an advisory panel that's comprised of these people who will uh, meet uh, monthly or quarterly and, and, and you can uh, be accountable to them and you can say, we're accountable to this group that's made up of, of the local professionals in our, uh, in, and stakeholders in, in our community. Building a solid outer circle is the first step and a critical step in the building of a successful COSA project. While the outer circle is being built, work can begin on building the inner circle. It's a circle that's comprised of, of volunteers who are carefully recruited, screened and trained and, and matched up with a, an appropriate core member. That's the inner circle. The COSA volunteers we have are very, um, they come from all walks, all professions in life and most of them are very nervous at first. They're not bleeding hearts and they're uh, committed to community safety. I'm Wayne. My name is Ivy. I'm Bernie. I'm Maureen. My name's Margaret. Hi, I'm Gabriel. They're parents, they have children, some of them have victim, been victimized themselves so they, they're going there with their eyes wide open. So our volunteers are your neighbors. They're just anybody. Our youngest volunteers are in their 20s and our oldest volunteers are in their 80s. We recruit through faith-based groups, through 12-step programs, through the college, through the university. We advertise using the services of Volunteer Victoria to which we belong. I was doing pastoral care in a long-term care facility, but I still had that hankering to connect with those in life who have had very difficult experiences. Well, in the beginning, I was really reluctant because it was dealing with the perpetrators. And I had worked so long with victims, and, um, and I knew the damage that, that was part of their lives, and some never recovered. I'd been working in the prisons, well, now it's about five years, so at that point it was probably just about three years as a counsellor in the prisons. And I had had um, a lot of experiences with the inmates, and I think I had learned from that that they were real people, just like you and I, and that they really wanted to change their life, many of them, and wanted to even do some good in the world. I've been volunteering or working as a contractor with offenders for most of my adult life. Um, I was one of the first members of the very first circle of support and accountability in British Columbia. You know, the, uh, the, the chief factor is one that is really, really hard to, uh, to measure, um, and that is maturity. Someone who has 
enough life experience behind them that they can uh, sit down with somebody who's experiencing stress or has a problem and they can call on that experience of their own. So we're looking for someone who's mature, someone who's known in the community, so someone who can provide references, someone who has a profile in the community, someone who's already busy in the community, looking for someone who has been here long enough to know the community, someone who has a balanced lifestyle, balanced in outlook and lifestyle. If people think they're going to change people, I'd really tell them don't go near it. Because it's not about changing people, it's about supporting people. In our work with, uh, with core members, boundaries are very important. Um, they're, they're critical to the, uh, the safety of the circle and the safety of, the, uh, of our core members and our volunteers. I spend a lot of time on boundaries. We touch base. How are you doing? What did you do this week? What did it look like? How did you feel? We have quite a, quite a lot of communication and I think that that keeps them safe around boundaries. So boundaries aren't always about a relationship. Boundaries can have to do with a person's time or energy or money. Who am I? It's likely that some potential volunteers will have experienced sexual abuse themselves or live with a family member who has been abused. From my perspective as a victim is, is being able to, to humanize uh, my abusers and, and look at this person from the perspective of, you know, you're a human being, you have an eternal soul and you really matter to God and stuff happened in your life and stuff happened in my life and so there's a um, I think there's a connection there because of that um, it was a hard decision for me at first to get involved with COSA because I too have a daughter who unfortunately was a victim twice in her life well there's no reason that someone who has been a victim can't be a volunteer but we'll, ha we'll have a long dialogue about that during the screening process. We want to be sure that people aren't doing their own victim work through volunteering. All volunteers go through a thorough training process. We generally run a 10-week, once-a-week training. So two hours a week for 10 weeks. And that training will cover everything from risk and relapse, substance abuse, conduct and confidentiality, I see the training period as a screening tool as well. People often screen themselves out at some point during the 10-week training period. There are all kinds of, um, you could say, rules and agreements uh, to really operate circles in real life. It looks, when you hear the people talk, quite natural that it's about relationship building, that it's about setting boundaries, and that you have this natural process going on between volunteers and the core member. But behind that, you need, really need to have some things in place, otherwise things could go wrong. We also heard that about, uh, in, the, in the fragment. For instance, uh, the discussion you need with somebody who is a victim of uh, sexual abuse him, himself or herself. So the standards or the agreements about circles were a very important issue in circles for you because we realized that out of the Netherlands, Belgium and the United Kingdom, three and later six new countries would start with circles which would, um, when we started the project, we, we thought this could be also a fragile situation. Many countries, far away distances, how do we keep um, the, the, the integrity, the importance of certain basic rules together to make sure that after initial enthusiasm maybe there will, will, there will be failures and it take, can take a couple of years before we can restart with circles. That's why we decided to also do research to define together some basic quality standards and other agreements about circles. I will go through these agreements quite quickly because they're, they're all set in documents and they have been adopted by the partners at a set of materials that are important for the future. The first 
document were the quality standards that were developed by Susan Brown and also Birgit Wilm of Nottingham U University through a round of interviews and discussions. We found that certain guiding principles, some of you, some of you will recognize most of them immediately as very evident and very important uh, in circles. Safety, I won't go through them, uh, all of them, safety, responsibility, individuality and respect, these are the, you could say, the charta of circles that all partners agreed upon that these would be the guiding principles. Operating principles, what kind of formal processes and strategies do you really need to have in place when you start running circle projects? We've seen things in the fragment about volunteer training, but also circle coordinators need to be selected and trained. Outer circle members need to be carefully um, um, uh, brought into the outer circle. Recruitment of core members, of course, is a very important process. During the research, we also found that an exit strategy might be, need, might be needed. If core members' uh, um, risk signals become higher and higher and you have to um, uh, act on that, then an exit strategy might be needed. This is also the case for volunteers, because during operational circles, it is possible that the volunteers um, uh, find out for themselves it's too much for them. Um, <coughs> Uh, life circumstances can make it necessary for them to step out of circles so you need a formal strategy to have them leave and also if recidivism takes place you really have to know as a circle what to do operating circles is not only about rules and only about uh, agreements what is important what are important values it's also about sharing the best practices amongst the, uh, pi the pilots uh, in the starting countries and the, uh, the, um, the um, uh, circle projects in the, uh, in the already, uh, already operational countries. Um, best practices were um, um, uh, researched through a blog on the Circles of You website, which was, which was opened for all project partners and also Circles members throughout the, uh, throughout the countries. And here on this slide we can see some examples of the topics that were, uh, that were uh, 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 written on this blog. Um, Romulus, who was the responsible for this uh, um, research in best practices, together with Audrey of the Dutch Probation Services, maybe they, they can tell us a little bit about the, uh, the background of the, uh, these best, best practices. Romulus is sitting over here. Yeah. Audrey Romulus, yeah. Please please stand up for a moment as well. Yeah. Maybe you can tell a little bit more about this background. Well, we didn't really succeed to create a conversation via the blog between uh, as uh, originally was planned. But uh, we succeeded to collect some uh, stories and we are still working on uh, uh, and uh, yeah, we have some illustrative uh, things uh, so uh, situations, uh, more exceptional situations which uh, took place in different uh, countries also and in different moments of the implementation of uh, the method and uh, yes they are uh, we are still working at it but they, we create a structure a kind of uh, yeah, uh, overview of categories of uh, best practices. And is the idea that it becomes a sort of knowledge center so that if in every country, any country you're working, that you can go to this blog and, and post some information or find some information? I think now the, what we can at this moment uh, the realize with this is uh, to have a certain uh, amount of stories which are counting at, as illustrative stories for how to solve, how to deal with situations, with comparable situations in, uh, and uh, I think this will be the basic uh, document or the basic element for the best practice. This can be used further to, to, yeah, to um, try to um, 
extend implementation and so on based on these uh, experiences. But uh, we are still working on it. If, if there's someone in this room that hears about this blog for the first time, where can he or she find it? Uh, there is a link via the website, circles for eu So there is a there is an official link. If you if you Google on it, I think you find it as the first or second. Uh, you find the website, and from the website is a connection, a link to the blog. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, the next. The video fragment tells us more about the circles in operation. Um, what are the effective circle processes? Um, some of the themes are motivation, risk factors, monitoring, uh, accountability of the circle, very important, safety mechanisms, and something about volunteer motivation. One of my earliest experiences with circles of support, I kept saying to the guy who's our core member, I said, you can't ever forget that you were a sex offender. And he looked me straight in the eye and said, I'm not a sex offender. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I've read your record. And he said, I've committed sexual offenses. I did that. Um, I own up to that. But I don't do that anymore. I'm not a sex offender. I'm just like you. I'm just a human being. And that's a really, really important thing to get across to your core member. He's called a core member rather than an ex-sex offender or a sex offender or an offender. I and mean, mostly we just like to call him Paul or Peter or Mary or June or whatever their name is. A man we'll call Steve is a core member of a circle. He was incarcerated for 10 years and made contact with the COSA group the year before his release. So I had actually put a lot of um, thought and, and emphasis and focus on my release probably a year and a half to two years prior to my release because I knew I'd done a, I'm doing a long term and there's so many changes and I knew I was going into a strange area for me that I wasn't familiar with so I, I had to figure out a way of how I was going to make it as easy as a, a transition as possible for myself and, and for the community as well because I knew they would have some huge concerns and, and issues with me being released. The core member must understand accountability as well as receiving support. Foremost in everyone's minds is no more victims. He has to be accountable in terms of what things get him into trouble. Uh, if, he, if alcohol is a problem, then he uh, has to abstain from alcohol or drugs. And he has to be able to be accountable for his behavior um, uh, day to day, hour to hour, while he's in the community. We knew every minute where he was. And when we finally got him <coughs> placed in, in a motel, um, we still knew where he was. And, and even, I think, one of our circle members drove by the hotel a little while later to make sure he was still there. So, and, and we, in that first week and second week and in the first month, we were with him at all times. He went nowhere without two of us there. The circle has to be accountable, too. And uh, this is a part that, uh, that some circles um, in the early days um, had to understand, was that they're accountable to the community. Um, the core member is accountable to the circle and through the circle to the community that means the community has to be accountable as well. So that's put in place a, um, a safety measure for him as well and, and he's still doing this after two years. So that accountability is being built in. There is no longer a system making him accountable, forcing him to do that but it's now become built in as part of his social structure. I think it's COSA groups usually meet weekly, and more often if there is need. Groups typically stay together for a year or more, depending on what they've agreed upon in the Covenant. The Covenant is the foundational document, if you like, the heart and soul of a circle of support. Uh, no Covenant, no circle. Um, it's, it, 
it sets up, it frames a relationship that the, the Corps member and his circle volunteers expect to have over the, uh, over the period of time in the future. Um, they're not legal documents. Um, they're not, um, they're moral documents. They're morally binding maybe, but they're not legally binding. And they ch they're living documents. They can change. Many volunteers are members of a faith community and it's their own personal experience of faith that often motivates them. For me, especially with the One Circle, I found it to be a very spiritual experience, really deeply spiritual. Uh, because there was a level of honesty and integrity with our core person and with each other. That's my faith I can't separate from any other part of me, but that's not the motivation. I guess the human dignity of each person is my motivation and I don't believe you have to be a Christian or a person of faith to, to believe and respect in the dignity of everyone. This is um, probably one of the uh, most unique ways of, of you as a citizen contributing in a very very concrete way to the protection of uh, women and children and other vulnerable people in your society. This is putting, this is affirmative action. I think if anybody wants to become a volunteer for COSA, um, you know, you really have to have your heart into it. You really have to believe in, in your core member that um, he is going to have problems. There's no two ways about it. You're gonna, it's going to be difficult, um, and it's going to be easy at times, too. So back to research, we've started with a movie fragment about the basic uh, conditions in a jurisdiction to start a project. The second fragment was about the basic agreements and guidelines. And the last fragment was about when you really start a circle, certain processes are really important. Not only support, but also accountability, to mention uh, just one example. That's why we ask the starting countries, Bulgaria, Latvia, Catalonia, also to conduct process evaluations to see if these important processes actually happened during their first circles. And we will present now some of the results of these process evaluations and then we'll continue on, on, uh, to the last part of our uh, presentation. Um, in Latvia, the process uh, results is that indeed there are now three circles in operation, that there is a high expertise and dedication of circle coordinators, the three-day volunteer training and additional training supervision sessions have, are in place. Also as a process uh, element, it was difficult to find motivated core members and it was also a problem that there was almost no conditional release for sex offenders. Positive, the inner and outer circle cooperation, there were good relationships and a formalized exchange of information. So we see that uh, as a process, there is uh, uh, an overall good results and some things to solve when circles actually start running in Latvia. Uh, in Catalonia, um, one of the elements of the process evaluation was an evaluation of the volunteer training. Uh, uh, an ev evaluation of experience of 12 volunteers, which is, uh, which is nice, it sheds uh, some uh, light on, on what is uh, essential for volunteers themselves. Um, they had a training needs questionnaires, uh, questionnaire which reveals there are uh, certain priorities in training needs, so which is a good thing, you can apply that in your own uh, uh, project as well. Um, in general, COSA volunteers were highly satisfied, as most COSA volunteers in most projects, uh, I uh, may say. Um, but there were some coordination and organization needs, especially about uh, locations, where to meet, and uh, how to exchange information. Um, there is a need among the volunteers to share experiences with each other. So uh, we have found that in the Netherlands as, as well very helpful to organize meetings for volunteers from different uh, circles. So maybe that is an idea for uh, the Catalonian circles as well. They need fast communication. For example, WhatsApp uh, instead of mail uh, was uh, suggested. Um, 
the questionnaire also revealed that uh, the information about the time that volunteers need to invest uh, uh, needs to be correct, to have a, a correct estimation of how you will, uh, what is needed from you as a volunteer for uh, what you need to be able to commit in time and, and also the emotional commitment um, probably was uh, a bit uh, surprising for some volunteers uh, because that was also an information need which resulted from this uh, uh, volunteer evaluation. We will just run a bit more quickly through the sheets now. Um, shall I go on? In Bulgaria, uh, there, were, there are three circles in, in operation and the fourth is being prepared. All in all, Bulgaria has succeeded in a somewhat grassroots approach. They had to start from almost uh, nothing, as you saw from the adaptation the, uh, study. Um, mainly social support was available, um, but they succeeded through these uh, past uh, two years because also the volunteer motivation is, uh, is rather high and the core member motivation is high. They had uh, all three core members were self-referred. Um, Structures risk assessment was in place uh, at the end, and um, they also succeeded in getting some project supervision by one of the country's uh, expert forensic psychiatrists. So they secured the, the, the supervision, supervision element in a country when, where there's almost nothing available, which is a very good accomplishment, I think. Um, and to extend this prog uh, professional network is process in progress. Um, also there were some challenges, especially very high risk sex offenders uh, were rather challenging for the volunteers and maybe there are some extra supervision or training needs. Um, the last uh, uh, theme in the fragment we saw just, uh, just now was about the impact uh, COSA can have on volunteers. Can volunteers who have been victims themselves, can they do it? One of the um, deliverables of the whole Circles for EU project was a research agenda and we uh, had also to, uh, do some research, develop some research proposals. Uh, in the research group, we agreed that uh, research into uh, the impact of circles on volunteers should w be one of the research proposals. And this is going to be further de developed by uh, Chris Wilson from Circles UK and uh, um, uh, Stefan Bogarts from Tilburg University, Birgit Vaughan from Nottingham University, and maybe some others will also be involved. Um, Finally, and here we come to the end uh, of our very long uh, presentation, uh, the final fragment about what can COSA accomplish for sex offenders. <coughs> I'm afraid something's going wrong now. Shall I just do some subtitles? Because essentially what she is saying they is that and oh, they there she is. have been clean and they are excited about life. That gives me hope. Seven years into the project now, I get calls from all over Canada from men, usually at Christmas or at some significant event. They call me because mine is the number they still have. Panora, do you remember my mentor? Would you call my mentor and say, I got married. Would you call my mentor and say, I have a job and I'm doing really well? Or would you call my mentor and say, it's been two years and I'm still clean? And I can't tell you what that feels like. And that's success. This was just a very short fragment uh, with some experiences uh, coordinators and volunteers have about the effects COSA ha can have on the core member. Um, effects on core members and their social network on their life without recidivism has also been a part of the Circles for You research. I will go through some of the deliverables quite uh, uh, quickly before we go to lunch. One of the deliverables was an international circles database that we will establish with all partner countries. 
Um, the, it, there will be separate databases in every country because we found that it was impossible to have one central European database due to all kinds of uh, legal restrictions. We will combine the database based on research projects that make it for us possible to combine the circle contents and results for many countries. And you see here some of the indicators that will be basic in every database. Also, three effectiveness studies designs uh, have been produced and we will actually ask for funding at the appropriate funds for um, um, future research. And we come to our conclusion. First, we're not going to conclude about all these research reports we've just uh, uh, discussed with you. We want to conclude about the importance of research in a project like this. We as researchers, and I think the other researchers can uh, confirm that we thought that the research efforts were indispensable for the further development and the support of practice, especially in the starting countries. Uh, they helped a structured, careful implementation of circles. And they also helped the orienting countries to really prepare their future circle projects. Research supported the communication because we were um, uh, using the same um, uh, study research language to inform each other. And it, of course, gives credibility in every individual country to know that seven other countries are actually also active in circles and doing research, which is very helpful to inform, for instance, uh, national stakeholders. A part of the sustainability will be that um, the CEP uh, is discussing, deciding to adopt the Circles for You research network as a central uh, a group for research uh, in Europe. And, um, well, this is the end of our long um, presentation. And the last remark we want to make is that in spite of all the language barriers, instead of all the other research that our fellow researchers had to do, we all, we all delivered all the products that we had to. And so we want to, Mechtel and I and Romulus, want to thank the researchers for all their efforts in this project. <laughs>